morning, everybody. Good air of Shabbos. You are listening to Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. We taste better. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Naomi Nachman, and I'm about all the food, all the time. I love food. I love to shop for it, cook it, eat it, eat at restaurants, anything food related. I'm also a kosher personal chef. I cook for people for Shabbat, for Yom Tov, small parties. Anytime you don't feel like cooking, you give me a call. I'll do it for you. Um, I hope that you'll tune in every week and hear about my cooking adventures, uh, my kosher food traveling, sharing of great food ideas and recipes each week. But I also like to hear from you. Let's make this interactive. So uh, send me an email, Naomi at NahumSiegel.com. You can join my fan page uh, on, um, what's it called? Facebook? <laughs> on Facebook, what we do without Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and all those social media outlets. I also have a website, The Aussie Gourmet, and you can join um, my newsletter on the right-hand corner. You can just sign up. I'll send one email a week with some great recipes and fun ideas and what's coming up on Table for Two. So just, you know, if you've had something awesome to eat or you eat at a, ate at a great restaurant, let me know and I'll go there too. And just, you know, if you have cooking questions, I'm always happy to try to answer everything. So I have a great show today on this Erev Shabbos. We've had kind of like crazy weeks and kids are finishing up school and, you know, weddings and graduations and bar mitzvahs. So, you know, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it all. But, you know, I got to, you know, always try to come together on Friday morning and share some of the wonderful experiences I've had all week. Um, one of my favorite events, you know, of the year, of the week and of the year is the Long Island Kosher Barbecue Competition. Last year, I don't know if anyone had heard the interview, but you can actually go back. I'm not sure of the date. Uh, it was about uh, early June last year. Um, I had Marvin Rembo. Uh, I don't know. Uh, how, how do you how do you say when you were uh, of blessed memory? Um, he was a guest on our show. And he passed away about a week later, and he was the head of the Long Island Barbecue Competition. And it was an amazing event. I was asked to be a judge of the booth and decoration of each booth and the booth names. It was a great, great event. But this year, they asked me to be a food judge. Now, for me, there is nothing better than tasting barbecue food for like a four-hour, three-hour, uh, over a three-hour spread of time. So I'm really excited. And, um, you know, so uh, we, we remember Marvin today. Um, it's about a little over a year since his passing, which was right before the event it was very quick and untimely and we're very sad. And But we have his his friend and uh, almost a neighbor, a neighbor, and, and you davened at the same shul together, I believe. You went... Um, and so I have Michael Glickman. He's the new, you're the head now? Well, co-chairman, actually. Co-chairman of the Long Island Barbecue Competition. Welcome to the Lower East Side on this Friday morning. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's get straight down to Tuchless about when it is. Everyone grab your pen and paper because if you haven't gotten the emails or Facebook messages from me, uh, let's get right and sure. know when it is. When is this it's awesome event? Scheduled for Sunday, June 22nd. Gates open at 11 o'clock and it runs to about 3.30. Okay. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. And it's in Westbury. It's in Westbury off of Candy Rock, Candy Rock Rock Road, 243. Okay. And to get, just so you know, if you want to look it up, uh, go to www.licosherbbq.org. And we have full address information, map, uh, details provided there as well, as well as contact information should you have any questions. You know, the... Quite often on Sundays, I'm looking for something to do. You know, uh, I have a wedding in the evening and you have this whole beautiful day in front of us, you know, to try to kill time with the kids and, and they finish school. There's no pressure of homework or studying. It's a great day to get out there. It's so much fun. It certainly is. I mean, the, the way we've done this is, is that it's really a family and community event. You have the barbecue competition going on. So this year you'll have 19 teams competing in the categories, uh, the four food categories, as well as the two culture categories that you judged last year. Yeah, yeah. And simultaneously there is on-site kosher cafe. So there's food available. There are uh, is a kid's play zone that's got the inflatable rides, face painting. There will be live music. There's a lot to see and do while you're there, so it's a great way to spend a few hours with your family, if, especially if you love barbecue. Yeah, well, who doesn't love barbecue? Okay, great. So what um, are the different categories? I know like there's a lot of barbecue competitions around the country and now a lot of kosher barbecue competitions. We'll get back to that in a minute. What are the categories that um, the barbecue guys are competing in? 
Sure. The the teams actually compete in four major food categories. Okay. So it's best brisket, best ribs, best beans, and best chicken. Mm. Is and Ari White competing this year? Yes, he is. Oh boy, I feel sorry for everyone else. <laughs> he he's one of the big guns that uh you know everyone is shooting for because th th what's interesting about our competition, many of these uh, along the kosher circuit, is that it's professionals and amateurs. Right. So you don't have to be a professional like like Ari to go up against and win. I mean, last year the the mob team from Merrick, Long Island. First competition, they won. That's awesome. Mob, what did that stand for? Do you it's remember? It's Maven's a barbecue. Yeah, they have these really cool names. So they have to compete in four different categories. Four categories, yeah. And they actually start, let's walk through the process of when these guys begin to this cooking process. Because, you know, you don't just show up, light a fire and throw some burgers on. Sure. It actually starts on Thursday evening when there's a cook's meeting where they actually get their brisket, their meats, and they start preparing their sauces. And where do the meats come from? The meats are actually provided by Fairway, who's our title sponsor, as well as our new sponsor this year, which is uh, Agristar and their Aaron's Best brand. Okay, and the mashkiach comes down. It is under the Chafke, so thank you to the Chafke for being involved in this wonderful, wonderful uh, barbecue competition. So the highest level of kashrut is involved with this. So oh, yes, uh, yes it's, they've, been, it's they've been a great partner. And, and what's great about that is just like everyone else like barbecue, all the rabbis from Chafke who are working at our event, they love barbecue too. In fact, <laughs> the barbecuing rabbis. One of the lead rabbis cooks barbecue almost every weekend he says so he just actually this is not work for him he actually enjoys coming out and seeing what's going on they probably fight for that job no i wanted the mish mish of the event no, it I is it's a it. lot of fun it's a great day the competitors i mean they are up all night long smoking okay, so they get the meat thursday night they yep they and then they prep it then it gets stored away obviously with sundown on, on friday for shabbos it's closed it's locked away under supervision in the fridges at the at, at our site and then on Sunday, on Saturday evening, uh, tonight, this year at 11 o'clock, they will get their materials. They'll get their grills. The rabbis from Kuf K will actually light their grills. Who, who, part, who gets the grills? The who, teams themselves. Who? Okay, Who? what brand are they? Oh, they're all Weber. Weber, uh, Weber donates K them? Uh, Jetmore, our sponsor, does. Okay, wonderful. So they've been a great Thank supporter. You. Thank you to them. Uh, and then they literally light their grills and away they go overnight until the next day when... So these guys are standing outside overnight next oh, yeah. to their barbecue. It is It is like a marathon for And they dive in in the morning they with do, it filling yes. on right by their grills. Yep, they do. <laughs> and they, they, they some of these teams are so crazy because this is an, a hobby for them, for most of them. So they'll actually travel the circuit and do this. this okay, is, what do you mean travel the circuit? Right now there's five uh, what we call affiliated uh, local barbecue championships that are kosher okay. uh, there is atlanta there is kansas city there is memphis where it all started 25 years ago there are new ones uh june 1st just this year there was chicago had their first right. uh and uh, this september there'll be one in so uh, southern connecticut in fairfield county the southern yeah, i'm a new judge england, there too yes <laughs> so, so, Summer southern of new england uh, <laughs> barbecue championship so it's really a popular circuit we're all affiliated we all know each other and it's it's a friendship between right. the, the cities and the teams it's so cool uh, we've had yosef silva who's been a competitor i have got to get a hold of yosef um he's got an amazing blog himself um thisamericanbite.com and he's a competitor Mendel Siegel also they're both from Kansas City I'm not sure are they is Mendel competing again I have year? to check the register Mendel I think we he's the, from the Vada Kashrut of uh, uh, Kansas City and he he was actually on the show last year and yep. um, we, we he was he was competing and he was so excited and it's a great honor that some of these teams like from Atlanta they come up for right. us for this event the grilling Grill to fill in. The grill in to fill in. I think that's hilarious. That's like one of my favorite. Can we grill fish? Can you grill fish? Oh, but it's not one of the categories. It's not. Can we make one a category? We can look at it. <laughs> now, close up to the mic. I have uh, Moishi Schoenfeld from Aussie's Fish. He's going to be joining us in a little bit later on in the show. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's very excited to get some fish on the grill. But I do want to talk to you about that, Moishi, because the nine days is in the middle of the summer and we need to get people grilling fish. So wonderful um okay so we've got these guys competing everybody shows up and then how does what's the next step like what should i as a judge expect like well the judges are, are we have this year a mix of what's called kansas city certified judges because clearly the importance to all these teams are if you're going to compete you want to really be judged on its merits so we have professional kansas city certified judges along with you know foodies and experts such as yourself yeah i'm a professional out, eater That's rounding it. out the judgment uh <laughs> on these categories and they're they're scored and tabulated in the computer 
and then the results are tabulated at the end and presented for pro, uh, prizes, you know, first place, second, third, and then the grand champion, such as last year's grill and fill-in, which w it means they won all the categories by the most points, including the, the what we'll call the culture categories, which are the name and booth design. Right. The, I think I think the grill and fill-in was really cute, and I liked Hakodash Barbecue also, but you changed his name to the Wandering, Wandering Q, Q, a little controversial. Which I also think is kind of... We're not going there, but yeah, I thought that was very yeah, cute. And that's, again, it, it, it talks to what this is about. This is right. fun. I mean, yes, it's a competition, but at the end of the day, we're doing this for charity, and these teams love doing this because they, they have a passion for barbecue. Right. So it's a great thing for them as well as people who come and watch and see their passion. Yeah, it's a great day. Now, one of the other really um, cool events, and I know that some of my friends that came out last year, they have an eating competition. <laughs> yes, So let's do. talk about that. We actually have a, a pickle eating and hot dog eating contest for both adults and children. Um, and this is more of a speed contest than quantity. And interestingly, last year, and he's returning this year, it's under the supervision of Don Moses Lerman, who's one of the world's eating champions and has won most of the prizes for eating competitions all around the world. Okay, is, is he orthodox? Uh, I do not believe he is. Okay, because I, I don't know what. I actually just read in the I'm, Time magazine. I have it. I bought it into the studio with me. Um, last week this past week's time magazine and they actually put out the wackiest eating record so someone eating like 121 winkies in six minutes i think i'd rather die i've never had entomans so and, and like interestingly wacky. enough uh just like the mob winning you know in the first year last year the winner of the adult hot dog eating contest is david damon he's a temple member of ours yeah. he won two years in a row Wow. I never knew, and I think no one who knows David knew he could put away so many hot dogs so fast. Is he big or little? He's a very large gentleman. <laughs> uh, not weight-wise, but he's certainly a good 6'5". Uh, wow. So he's, uh, but it was surprising that he could put that away and it reveals sides of people you never knew until they let it all hang out, it's something like this. hilarious because I think the guy from the Nathan Hot Dog Competition a couple of years ago was this little Jap Asian yes. gentleman, and he was like little, and he put down whatever hot dog amount he yeah. did. I it's amazing, and, and even the kids enjoy it. I mean, I know my kids have looked at it. I'm not quite sure they're ready to compete at that level, but <laughs> it, it, it is a lot of fun, and everyone has a great time with this, and it, 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 it's just part of making this event so great, and, and it's such a reason to come out, because you get to do and see things like this that is, you know, not common for most people. Okay. Um, do you know some of the judges' names that are familiar to some of the foodie judges? Sure. So, uh, we have Danny Klein from, yeah, that's Kosher. Oh, he's fantastic. We've Good big got, shout out to him. Uh, uh, who is it? We've got Joy of Kosher coming. Oh, the, uh, um, is that Shlomo and Schiffer Klein? Yes. Tamar, yep, yep. Is Tamar coming too? Tamar uh, that I'm not sure. I know uh, Shlomo is. That oh, I'm, I'm okay. Let, bring it on, Shlomi Klein. We're going to eat some braai together. He's South African. And we've got the guys from, uh, I think it's Great Kosher Restaurants. Oh, Ilan Kornblum, a yep. great guest and a big fan. We are at the Nakam Siegel Network, big fans of Ilan and his amazing um, uh, Great Kosher Restaurants makers. And he's actually going to be on our live show. We are having a live show in Gomeglat in two weeks. Um, so here's your uh, first notice, everyone. Um, in two weeks, uh, I think that's June 27th. And Ilan is going to come down and show us his brand new magazine. So, oh, that's right. great that yeah, he's so on. He's, mixer. he's the biggest foodie I know. <laughs> yeah, so we have a mixture of those kind of judges. Then even on the culture categories, we, we have important judges. We have one of our new uh, charity partners, which is the JJC of the Five Towns and their uh, Rita Shlonik uh, oh, Food Pantry. Oh, yes. So yes. one of their executives will be on the culture category. From the Jewish Community Center. Yes, yeah. Rena Shlonik. I know her very well. Yeah. So is she going to be a judge? Uh, I'm not sure who they're Who designated. they're sending? Okay, wonderful. But we also have people from Yad the Yad, who's one of our charity partners. Right. Now, let's talk about, you keep saying charity partners, and I think mm -hmm. that's great. I want people to understand that this is just not, you know, um, you know, the admission is free, but there is stuff to purchase. Yep. The stuff that's purchased, there's obviously a sale made, and the profits, a, sh a good share of the profits is going to go to Tzedakah, to charity. Yeah. And I think that is wonderful. It's not just, you know, being stored away for another time. You're actually using this. Exactly. And this was something that was important to Marvin when he yes. first created this, this he concept. He was so passionate about that. That if we're going to do this, you might as well do a mitzvah. And, and, and there is hunger in every community. So, and since it is universal, whether you're Jewish or not, you know, he thought this would be a great way, since you're talking about food, that it does benefit local hunger reliefs. I so not only beautiful. do proceeds from the, from the event go, but even the leftover foods go to the pantry. So there is no waste. 
I know the JC Seafood Pantry is amazing. They do a lot of stuff. I know they also have one in West Hempstead. I, I know. I don't know mm. if they're affiliated. I don't believe they're affiliated this year, but we'll talk about next year. Mm. But, uh, but I think that um, it's a really wonderful event. And if people in general have leftover food, they can bring it to the yeah. JC Seafood Pantry. We're going to have to get them in and talk about that on one the One of show. our other partners uh, on the charity side is Rock and Roll. So they take healthy canned goods and they bring that to the needy. So we're actually encouraging people to show up with a can that they can donate and we'll, they'll be collecting it and then using that for their needs. That's lovely. So if you plan on coming to the event, which hopefully you all are, and and you bring go through the cans. You know, sometimes in the closet you buy something because it's on sale or you think you might want to try, like, you know, you buy some artichokes and you don't want them or I mean I love artichokes. They go in every salad possible, but or a corn or this or you have a surplus of tuna. Please bring it down. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, as I said, there's so much behind the event that makes it such worthwhile. And last year we had over 3,000 visitors come. So we're hoping for good weather, which is the most important thing. I know, please. This is a rain or shine event. <laughs> but, you know, we want people to come out and enjoy themselves. There will be some exhibitors uh, showing materials from, you know, like uh, uh, Masbia will be there, which is another. Uh, Masbia is wonderful, yes. So there will be a lot of partners there that presenting information that, you know, they need awareness too. So it's really a lot behind the scenes that it isn't just you know the barbecue and the competition that we think people should come out and, and and learn about these important charities and the need that's in our own community it's it's really a it's wonderful it's i love to hear about the charity work that's involved behind this amazing event okay so um let's talk a little bit now about uh the food that's going to be for sale like people when they come you don't need to bring you know, like when you go out for the day and picnic, you're going to bring your sandwiches. And we've spoken a lot about having soggy sandwiches on the show. You can buy food there. Yep. So do we know who the vendor is yet? Well, no. Well, through the, our partners, both Agristar and Fairway, we'll have, you know, hot dogs. We have pulled barbecue brisket sandwiches. Oh, th they were unreal. If you've never had one and you've never been to, say, to one of Ari White's uh, traveling barbecue events... You're going to have your first one here. It's yeah. fabulous. He's actually even providing uh, those gigantic uh, smoked T turkey, turkey legs. legs. Oh, he's so famous for that. It's like apple, hickory, smoked. Yeah. They you know, sold like out. You walk around, like you walk around Disney and you see all those people with big drumsticks. Yeah. My mouth is watering. <laughs> we, I, I never even got one. We had a few hundred last year and they sold out in, in Very like quickly. an hour. So we yeah. actually had, have, he's been kind to, to give us more this year. <laughs> and it, I mean, I want to get one myself this year so yeah, I can take Go it. early, Michael. Make sure you. Uh, most of us who are working there will be up there before sunrise. So right. it's, we're, yeah. we're there. As soon as Ari <laughs> rolls up, just have him throw a few at you. <laughs> yes. You know, perks of working there. Right. No, I think it's really good because, you know, we don't get that chance to, uh, have a kosher barbecue that you can go for purchase in a local park. Yeah. And the grounds there are beautiful. You have a beautiful grounds there. We have the park in the back, in the back next to where the competition is. Yeah, bring a is. picnic blanket. Well, we have uh, full tents with, with tables for people right. to eat. I mean, you can picnic if right. you like. Uh, we picnicked last year. We, yeah. we bought our blankets and we sat and on them. And the rest of the food is kind of picnic food. There's ices. There's all sorts of drinks. So there'll be plenty to eat, you know, that are, let's say, picnic or barbecue inspired. Right. Cool. Very exciting. It's it's going to be a great event. Uh, let's all pray for really good weather. So um, I really want to thank you. Any any last words you want to add? And no, I, thank you for for being part of this. I mean, we actually thank all the professionals, whether judges, the teams. I mean, they all are committed to doing this because they see how important this is. And it's not just about okay, it's a competition and that's the end. It's so much more than that for our community. So we thank you for showing up and and helping us spread the word through your show. Yes, it's it's our pleasure. Um, you know, as as foodies and as you know, it just shouting the root from the rooftops about giving to Tzedakah and, and, and the food banks and, and just, you know, enjoying a wonderful family quality day. We just need that, you know, I keep saying it again, the good weather no, for you. And, and Keep uh, your fingers crossed and we'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you next week. We'll see you. Yeah. I can't believe it's so soon. We've been talking about this for a long time. Almost a year's worth of planning goes yeah, into this, yeah. which is what most people don't understand. And for our temple, Temple Beth Torah, who plays host, this has been a defining event for us, both bringing our membership together and for a good cause because the Temple also does a lot of charity work. So this is, uh, fits for us well. So all the volunteers that we get is just for the passion for doing this because it's the right thing and good thing to do. Okay, great. And people can walk around to the different booths, have a look. It's not just, you know, besides the, the great music and you're going to have great entertainment, they're working on a very special uh, group coming. We can't reveal the information until the contract is signed, but you're not going to be disappointed. Um, so, um, but you... What, the, what the people can do, what you can do with your families, you go from booth to booth and see what's going on and, 
you know. and see how they get, get tips, you know, maybe even a nibble here or there. Yeah, you uh, definitely get a nibble. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's a great experience. Again, if you love barbecue, you love outdoors, this is a, a you know, you can't find fault with this kind of event. It, it's great all the way around. And it, it because it's doing a good thing in terms of food and hunger relief, yeah, you, you, we, we think this is why it, it's attracted so many people over the three years now we've done this, this being our third year. You know, it's grown every year, and, you know, it, it's got to be the fact that people see. I'd like to go to the whole circuit. I'd love to be able to do that whole circuit. Yeah, there, there's again, there's five cities, and so. they all have unique aspects to their events. Right. So it, it's it's worth doing if you have the ability to travel. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I don't know right now. Well, you sell your points. You go to Ellie Schreiber at Get Paid, and you can sell your points and travel around the country chasing the Kosher Barbecue Fest. Thank you yep. so much, Michael, for Thank coming you again. in. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Michael and Moishi to switch seats uh, right here on Table for Two with Naomi Nachman on the Nachum Siegel Network. Our show is sponsored by Abels and Hyman. We taste better. So uh, we're talking about barbecues and, and uh, the sponsor of, our, of, of, of Table for Two actually is Abels and Hyman, and they are the number one kosher Glut kosher selling hot dog in America. So that's really nice. Whenever I go somewhere and, you know, friends say, oh, having a barbecue, what can I, you know, and I always say, what can I bring? And they're like, can you bring some of your Abels and Hyman hot dogs? So thanks, Seth, for giving them to me, who's the owner of Abels and Hyman. But I get to share them with my friends and available at all the local kosher supermarkets in your neck of the woods. Uh, you can also join the Abels and Hyman Facebook page. So my next guest is a little switch over from meat into fish because in the middle of the summer, and it's fact right after, not so much, it's early this year, I think, is, is the nine days, right? End of July. Early, right. It's so exactly halfway through the summer is we have the nine days where we're not to take a break from our barbecue and we're going to cleanse our body with some fish. So uh, Moishi's going to talk to us a little bit more about that later in the show. But welcome, Moishi Schoenfeld. Thank you for having me. Wow, we go way back, Moshi and I. The, the Schoenfelds and the Nachmans, we, like since we moved to the five towns, we became fast friends with the, the whole Schoenfeld family and I finally got to have you on the show and I've Thank done you. cooking classes for them I don't know many years when you were still in high school yeah <laughs> now he's a gorgeous baby girl okay and wife and wife. we won't forget your wife um so Moishi is uh, part of the Schoenfeld family and most American New York Jews have heard of Ossie Schoenfeld who is Moishi's late grandfather he started the fish business uh in 19 do you know the date in the 1950s right 42 years Not, ago right so 42 years ago yeah i'm really bad at math we're not going to go up that route <laughs> 60s 70s whatever uh, yeah it's in this probably in the 70s it was earlier than the 70s probably yeah uh, i don't know i know it's 42 years okay ago. there you go so in this says it on the website right on the <laughs> in the 1970s um and he's been bringing quality fish to uh new york for now 42 years and they have started off in a small store in Borough Park. They even had a restaurant there for a little bit. And the explosion of Aussie's fish from just Borough Park. You're in at least five locations now? I think six. Six? Oh, my God. You hear my excitement because, you know, I love my fish. Um, okay, so where are, the, where are you located now? We have uh, one in uh, five towns in Gourmet Glatt. Go, yep. That's yeah, Gourmet Glatt. Thank Gourmet -Glatt. you. And we're going to actually... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Gourmet Glatt in a little bit. That's the biggest store we have. And we have one in Borough Park, in Gourmet Glatt and Borough Park, Gourmet Glatt Market. Yeah. And we have one in Aaron's Casino Farms in Queens. Yeah. And we have one that opened about six months ago in Teaneck, in Cedar Market. Big shout it, out to them. Big shout out. And they're very good friends of our network as well. Cedar yes, Market. we were there. Um, I was with Nakam Siegel. About, what was that, three months ago? Yeah, and uh, and then we have in the upstate in the summer, we have one in Landau Supermarket and Byright Supermarket in Woodridge. So you're in two supermarkets upstate? Yeah. Did you have one in Brooklyn? Where? Williamsburg? Did you have one in Williamsburg? At the moment, we have one in Williamsburg, yes. Okay. A small little counter. Okay, that's, you know, that still works where you know you can go and get your quality fish from, from Aussies. Um, that's really great. So the, the store, I mean, the sto the original store is not there anymore, but you're like everywhere. You no, we're, we're only in supermarkets. We uh, we have a very high turnover rate in supermarkets of our fish, and it basically keeps the fish fresher for you, and you never have to worry about having an off smell or a day-old fish. We have a very high turnover, and we can keep our prices low by having more customers. I think that's fantastic. Now let's talk about fresh fish. People get a little bit nervous. How long do we keep? If I come to you, what's today? Friday, right? This Friday. Um, how long will this fish stay fresh for? 
I would keep it in the fridge for up to two days. Up to two you days. You don't. People get scared and they think I gotta come home. I gotta take it out of the package. I gotta cook it right away. Otherwise, the whole house is gonna stink. It's not true. You got two, three days. A good two, three days for sure for your fish to stay fresh. And then the bacteria will start breaking it down. But if you're not gonna use it, then don't wait two days to freeze it. Freeze okay. it right away. That was my question. So if you buy it and you know you're freezing it, do it immediately. Yeah. Okay. And how long can we keep fish in the freezer? Because I know we can keep meat, and maybe you know this, Michael, a little bit better. Um, we can keep meat a little bit longer. Yeah, for quite a in while. In the freezer, if it's frozen, kept frozen, yes, you you can certainly uh, keep it in the fridge for six months. Uh, something to that order, yes. Okay, so what about fish? Um, if you're just gonna freeze it in like a package like this, like your standard package that you're gonna get in Gourmet Glad or any of our stores, then I'd say any white fish like tilapia, flounder, anything like that is good for at least six weeks. Okay. Salmon is good for like at least three, four months. Oh, nice, because it's fattier? It's uh, yeah, it's a little fattier, the fish. Okay. And also, you could ask any of our guys to vacuum pack the fish for you, and then everything's good for like five, six months. Okay, and so if you were traveling, you could actually then get some vacuum-packed salmon and take it with you somewhere. Sure, and... yeah. Okay, cool. Because we're always talking about kosher food traveling, and, you know, people sometimes don't want to have meat. They can take some fish, but, of course, we would travel with it on ice and... Make sure it stays fresh. Okay, great. Now, people talk a little bit about the smell, right? Like, I, I, I use all my senses when I cook. So, you know, if it does have a fishy smell, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like, how do I know, like, when it's good or when it's bad? Well, fish should not smell like fish. That's what everybody thinks it should smell like. It should not smell like fish. Fish should smell like the ocean. You go to the beach, you go on a boat, on a day trip, and you have that ocean smell in the air. That's what you want your fish to smell like. Flounder predominantly always smells like that. That is a sign of fresh fish. It has to have a smell because everything has a smell. But it should smell like fresh ocean breeze. That's what it should smell like. Fresh ocean breeze. That sounds like so... It's a delightful thing. It's, it, it's great. It's like a commercial for fish. Okay, which I guess we are. <laughs> okay, and now... Um when it, if it smells bad, so what's would, the I smell? Would, I know I'm, I don't want to be gross or gross anyone out. And people are in the kitchen cooking as I'm talking. But... Like, how do I know? If, like, sometimes so if I even I, worry about chicken or fish, you know. So if I were you, um, basically your your package is, is sealing in everything. So there is slight bacteria that could be growing in there. And I would just give it a wash off. Your chicken too. I would just give it a wash yeah, off. I always rinse my chicken. And for sure, always wash your fish, for sure. But if after that it has any sort of smell, don't use it. Okay. So just err on the cautious side. Yeah. I mean, nothing's going to happen to you. Right, but right. Uh, if it has a smell... Dumper. Okay, now this is, I get asked fish, a lot of fish quen questions, a lot because of my association with, with you guys. Um, fresh salmon, as a, um, what's it called? Organic salmon? Not organic. Wild. Wild salmon, I'm sorry, I lost the word there. Wild opposed to farm. Give me some info. So well, let's have some I, get, I get this question. Because it's a little bit more expensive, wild. Wild is much more expensive but uh I, I go through this about 20 times a day with customers okay you and, need to give out cheat sheets and right? yeah we have we have signage up in the store that explains the differences between the wild and the farm caught fish um you could visit any of our store and it will say on it every package is marked if it's a wild caught fish or a farm raised caught fish um what is the difference so basically people are always telling me you can't eat the farm raised stuff it's not healthy it's mr gas Mr. Gass, you heard it here first on the Nachum Siegel Network. I work in Borough Park, so. <laughs> um, I like to explain it as what's better of the two. It's not what's one is good. Is one good for you? Is one bad for you? In my opinion, and I'm in the business since the day I was born. Right, literally, um, he really was. It's really a question of what's better for you. Um, all salmon, all fish is very high in omega-3s, vitamin Ds, vitamin Cs, vitamin Bs. They are very healthy for you, no matter how you're going to cut it. Your farm-raised fish, and I will not vouch for anybody else's company, but all the farm-raised fish that we buy at Aussies is we check out the companies. We do background checks on the companies. We check out their corporate system. We check out what they feed them, their antibiotics, everything. Basically, anything you're going to buy in Aussies is almost 100% antibiotic-free or very close to that. We don't buy any of that stuff that is full of antibiotics or full of uh, soy-based feed. We buy very healthy product. And it's very healthy for you. It's the same stuff that your chickens are getting, and everybody's eating chicken. It's right. very healthy for you. But on the other hand, some people want wild because wild is untouched by humankind. It's, it's only touched by nature. It's a natural product, 
And uh, they tend to be a, a fattier type of fish, especially in the salmon category. We only carry wild king salmon. And the wild king salmon is a fattier fish because it's a stronger fish, and a stronger fish has a better taste. So it has a more robust taste, a more flavorful taste. And uh, there's definitely no problem with any antibiotics that you wouldn't want to be in there or anything right, like that. Right, because it's out in the ocean. Yeah, it's untouched. We get it from a company in British Columbia right off the coast of Alaska, and it's good stuff. Sometimes when I've done shows for you, like Moshi will bring me a, a piece of fish and he says, cook this for the audience that's watching. And he goes, this fish was swimming yesterday. And I'm like, that's just so awesome. So how do you go and pick the fish? Do you go to the fish market yourself or your dad goes? His father is also, of course, in the bit. It's, it's grandfather, the Aussie's late Aussie, and then his son, Robbie and David. Yeah. And and you are the only third generation so far in the business? So far. So far. We'll see what happens. Don't cram it too much. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of stores all over New York we can fill Aussies up with, right? I guess um, so. So uh, who goes to the market? You, like your so, dad goes or David goes and they say, I want that one, that one, that? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe old timers remember driving down the uh, FDR. Yeah, right down and, here. I'm, po uh, I'm pointing down Grand Street. I'm right off. I used to go bike riding. Oh, yeah, it's right here. It's right here. It's right right by the FDR Drive. No parking. Oh, it's so a disaster that, today. So that's where the fish market used to be. But then they moved into a new place in the Bronx in Hunts Point. And it's basically a fish market that's the size of about like four football fields long. Is it gorgeous? It is. I did I tell you why the one. I don't is. know. I mean, there's no like pink ribbons flying right. around. No, but, but Sydney, the one in Sydney, Australia is gorgeous. Like, I mean, it's very nice. It's very clean. It's very large. It's fully insulated, so you have a 38 degree temperature year round. So you need to go with a sweater. Yes, you go with a Jacket. more than a sweater. <laughs> okay. In cool. the summer, in 90 degree heat, that's how you go. Oh, maybe so I'll come in in the summertime. <laughs> we either buy direct from companies in Scotland or in Canada, mostly our salmon. We buy direct. We don't go from the market for that. So we get salmon basically at least 12 to 24 hours ahead of anybody else because we're buying direct oh that's great which is amazing super fresh and um mostly everything else either we have direct connections or we go to hunts point and pick it out my father goes at least four or five times a What's week hunts point hunts point the fish bronx. market the bronx and he hand selects each one he's hand selects our tuna he hand selects our flounder hand selects our mahi he hand selects everything I just want to say something about aussie's tuna because i've turned many people onto eating tuna through a lot of the cooking demos um, I love tuna, and the best way to tell if it's good quality tuna, if it's nice, dark tuna, that's how I personally feel. And I feel that, like, sometimes when you see it, go to a different supermarket, this light-colored tuna, it's so, even though it's nine ninety nine a pound, it's not the same quality. That's usually pre-frozen. Right, it's pre-frozen. We don't, we don't sell pre-frozen. Your, your tuna is amazing. Like, I make quite often my own sushi. I love to make tuna tartare. Michael's smiling away oh, over there. Those are some of the favorites in my house. Oh, we love it. When I bring home tuna and, and I want to sear it and cook it, my kids freak out. They just want to eat it chopped up, a little sesame oil and sesame seeds and some scallions. And that's the best way to eat it is raw. And I know I cannot go to any. Uh, and I'm not just saying it because we have this relationship, but I, can, I, can, I don't trust anyone else to buy my, my tuna. So if you are looking to make some great tuna dishes from the from great blogs out there or the great, you know, great cookbooks that are provided for us just get the really good fish it really i think something like tuna really makes a difference i don't know if chicken really makes a difference when you're making a recipe empire chicken you know you're getting good chicken it's probably the same in, in all cooking you know it starts with good ingredients good ingredients but with especially you're going to eat it raw oh, or yeah. rare you want you know fish has got to be mm, yum <laughs> highest quality okay Great. Now you've you've moved a lot um, into just selling fish. You and, and you are famous for your herrings. Yes. We I should have, have told uh, you to bring me some. It's Eric Shabbos. I could certainly eat some herring right now. You know, whenever at my shul, they always have their herring and the men eating at kiddishes. I always have to sneak in there and get some herring because I love herring and your herring is outstanding. But you've moved into a different market as well of um, the prepackaged stuff. Um. Yes. Uh, I feel. I mean, our company feels a lot that. People have a tendency to be very scared of cooking fish. They are indeed. You are paying a higher price than for Michael's meat. You're <laughs> paying a uh, much steeper price. And it, I mean, there are many reasons why fish is more expensive, but it's very hard to get fish. It's not a, it's not a farm raised commodity. That's just, you know, you go to the farm, you pick it up. It's a very hard thing to get. And, and the prices are a little higher and people are scared to put something that costs you $10, $12 a pound into the oven and then mess it up. 
so they tend not to buy fish for that reason mainly. We have created a full line of ready-to-go meals, ready-to-go dishes. Can I hold one up? I'm going to hold one up. Um, for those of you, I don't know if I've said it earlier on in the show, but you can also watch our show today uh, on uh, nachamsegel.com. So you can, most of our listeners are audio and they hear it on the app. Brand new app. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but you can actually watch our show today and you can go, if you've missed today's show, you back. can always watch it. You can always watch it on um, YouTube on the Nachum Siegel Network channel. And we are, uh, we, oh, Moshe's already opening it. And we are, um, so gonna, I'm just holding up to the camera for those who can see it. So these are a brand new item that just came out in most of our stores. Okay. So this is not available on the American market anywhere. Anywhere. What does that mean? These are our special steam bags. Okay. Can I just lift one up? Sure. Okay. For those of you who are watching. They're special steam bags that are designed to cook fish inside and vegetables so that you get a whole meal and you can bake it in the oven like that without touching it. Or you can cook it in the microwave for 20 minutes or you can cook it in the microwave for three minutes. You could take it to work. You could take it on a trip. You could take it anywhere you want. And this is fantastic. And there's no smell, there's no cleanup, and there's no prep. Okay, so let, let, let's just, you know, try to describe for our listeners what, they're, what, they're, what I'm, I'm holding in front of me if you're, if you're listening to our show. It's a, it's a plastic bag. It almost looks like it's brown paper on one side and clear on top. It's folded over. It's got this fabulous marinade. It's got some a piece of salmon with uh, sesame seeds on it and some green beans. Now, this is dinner for one, correct? Yeah. This is a great meal. Lunch. Take it to work. Lunch. And and how do we how do we would would put this on a baking sheet and put it in the oven you at three fifty? Put it on a baking sheet 350, 20 minutes in the so oven. So why don't we or pop you could this? put it in the microwave? Moshi bought a microwave. We're gonna eat. ZK is jumping up and down. We're gonna eat. Okay, so we're gonna put put this on the plate. Mo Moshi's gonna pop that in his microwave. He's taking off his headset and he's gonna wander over to the microwave. And we are gonna microwave this for three minutes. Um, there's also. Um, flounder with julienne vegetables and it's it's really cute it says on the label healthy easy no smell yeah, that's a really great advertisement <laughs> no smell our food doesn't smell we have okay. brand new labels coming out for them <laughs> okay gorgeous gorgeous and i know that you have a lot of recipe cards because people don't know what to do right with so uh thanks to you we have a lot of recipe cards in our stores all credited with your name on them um but also we have a new website nazisfish.com yeah and you could go on there, and we have recipes on there, and you could sign up for emails, and you'll get a brand new recipe every single week. You'll get the sales of the week of the store that you select, what's fresh, oh, that's a cute idea. what's a great buy. Now, I mean, fish is like produce. Cherries, you don't buy cherries in the winter. You know, you don't buy um, striped bass in the winter either. You know, it's certain things at certain times of the year, and you're going to sign up to our emails, and you're going to get to know exactly all about the fish, how to cook it, when to buy, what to buy, what's on sale, and you're going to get tons of recipes that's gonna we're gonna flood your box with recipes but uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna make you into a, a fish maven and uh, you could sign up uh, online or you could visit our Instagram or Facebook we have Instagram yeah, giveaways yeah oh I saw that what's what, what's your face what's your name on Instagram Aussie's fish Aussie's fish okay no apostrophe O S S I E S I E S fish or Facebook at Aussie's fish uh, we just started rolling out the campaign we're having a bunch of giveaways we just gave away a ton of people we love giveaways on our show we just gave away a ton of fish for Shavuos for free. We're giving away whole salmon. We're Fantastic. Giving away tons When's of stuff. Why don't you announce your giveaway? Do you have another giveaway coming up? Oh, we don't up? have one right now. Oh, because all our listeners, we love giveaways. Okay, so stay tuned, though, to the uh, Aussie's Fish website if you're a Table for Two listener. So make sure you you keep track of the Aussie's Fish website for a giveaway because we love we love free things and especially food things. Okay, so the food is in the microwave. So in meanwhile, let's talk about those amazing sauces. This sauce in my house does not last too long, the spicy mayo dressing. Let's get those out. Okay, let's try them. Uh, do, you, do you smell the fish a little bit? It's cooking. It smells great. Wow, I can't wait to eat it. So let's get a plate and let's try some of the fish because, you know, we love to eat on the show. Don't we, ZK? Yeah. <laughs> okay so i'm gonna i'm just gonna spicy mayo um for those who are watching um those who, yeah let's do a little bit of each um we've got spicy mayo we've got a dill dill i think fine dill sauce um really wonderful with any kind of fish uh salmon patties you've got your amazing salmon oh cakes. we got a beautiful line of salmon burgers we have a brand new salmon burgers do you taste them they're carb free yeah, they're amazing. I cooked yeah. them up, I think, at our last carb show. Carb-free. Carb-free. I'm all about being a little bit carb-free. 
Okay, so these are a little bit fattening because it got a little mayo. Oh, we have a new lot. We have a new light spicy mayonnaise in the store. Oh, great! Coming out this week. Um, but I I, I love dips, um, and sauces with my fish. So we're gonna. Um, how's that fish coming along? We got about thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. That smells amazing. And of course, um, the amazing. I saw that you had also soup for. Shabu oh Wan. yes, we have a new line of dairy soups and power soups. People may remember we used to have a restaurant. Asi yes. Fish used to have a restaurant. Like, we get table. us. Nachum Siegel used to love Asi's table. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. used to like it. Everybody I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had some amazing stuff there. And we have the recipe still. And we are recreating them. And we are bringing them to store. We get our famous salmon chowder. Oh, my God. I love chowder. it. We have cream of mushroom soup. We have different stuff. Uh, we have a full line of pastas and stuff. Um, Here, let's have a plate. Now, this is one of your famous... Cr Kosher crab, right? Is this what we call this? Uh, seafood salad. Seafood well. salad. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little bit to everyone to try. Here's the K you can have. We got, have we got more plates? Yeah. Okay, here we go. This is made. Look how fresh this looks. Everything uh, is made fresh daily. Okay, so we're just going to talk a little bit how. There you, you go, Michael. To? Have you got a fork? There's a fork for you, ZK, and one for you, and one for me. Have you got one? Give me a fork. Uh, there we okay, go. give one to Michael. Moshi, you're going to have some? You're going to eat with us? Yeah, you probably had that, this a thousand uh, so. times. Okay, Moshi's going to go and get the food for us. Okay, so this is the seafood okay. salad, and I see it's got um, chopped up uh, pollock, which is the, I don't want to call it the fake crab, but that's what they really call it, and scallions, and it's really a wonderful, you can serve it like on uh, Shabbat afternoon for Sudashi shit or for Shabbat lunch. Okay, I'm going to try it. Baruch Adonai Shahakoni and the him eating uh oh i'm trying to be polite here this is amazing i like this this is Very really good. good well done okay so let's try it with some of the spice i'm gonna add a little spicy mayo on the side all the dipsy so let's show everyone what that looks like I'm just i'm just gonna have one more mouthful mm. there you go oh my goodness zk Oh my god, that spicy mayo was hot. ZK's uh, mouth is watering over here, I see. Okay, so all ba where's the plastic? Did you take I it off? I just took it off. Okay, so it peels back? Peels right off. Okay, I need to have a little sip of the water here. Can you open that, Moishi? <laughs> my mouth is a little bit on fire from the oh, from the um, spicy mayo. A little sip there, sorry everyone. Okay, so here is the green bean. So we have the pouch came out of the microwave in three minutes. And then we have the green beans and the salmon all cooked up. This is so clever. We're adjusting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit. I'm going to pass it around to the gang. And we're going to have a little try of all this fabulous food. There you go, ZK. Why don't you take some? And then I'm just going to show it up to the camera for the people that are watching. And I'm trying to describe the to the to the listeners this gorgeous food experience that we're having here take a little um it's really nice that's you know even you know i love to cook but i love my shortcuts you know yeah, I'm, people, I'm all about the pachka sometimes but i need a shortcut people appreciate shortcuts when it comes to fish because they just don't know how to do it right so we take care of it for you what's what's really interesting is i always feel that people overcook their fish when i hear that people cook salmon for 40 minutes i want to cry i want to whack them over the head you 20 minutes in sure. the oven um but this is three minutes in the microwave and it's not dry It's because it's steamed in the bag. Right. And that's, salmon is that's, a little... That's also a good point. You really can't dry out fish when you steam it. You really can't overdo it. And it cooks faster. Mm. You know what? I have this every day. <laughs> this is delicious. This is really, 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 really good. Um, full of flavor. Very moist. My, my mouth is a little still on fire from the mayo. I don't know <laughs> if you like spicy mayo. I love spicy. Okay, so you're going to have the spicy, but I'm going to take a little bit of the dill. Because I love dill. There you go. Here, let's switch around. This is really... I'm going to try a string bean. You hear the crunching into the microphone? This is un unreal. And it's also hard to get beans just right. Also, yeah, the beans we, cook we, we, You must we have, have really played We have a chef, this. and uh, actually, uh, kudos to my wife, but she actually let the chef come over, and me and the chef sat there for three days perfecting, and we got three out, and we're going to have another line of another three soon, but... It's a lot of work just to get the right thing. Yeah, because you can't you can't just use 
any vegetable that we tried with asparagus and squash nothing you know you got to get the right mix with the right fish yeah a lot of trial and error yeah this is really clever really outstanding i'm loving this this is very good now you can't do this in big sizes right this is really a one no portion. this is a one portion type of eating. thing oh it's out unreal if i can pass anyone else some more you can definitely try so that was the salmon with those with the string beans should we put another one in yeah let's try another one on the pesto so, or let's the do, julienne oh pasta pasta pest, uh, pesto 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 i make something called pasta pesto so let's talk Use a little bit about pesto. gourmet what Use pesto. Oh, of course let's talk a, a little bit about our what's for dinner segment uh sponsored by our friends at gourmet glad emporium in cedarhurst new york um so the recipe that I want to go through uh, is a very, 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 very easy. And it's this is an ode actually to the Long Island barbecue competition, this recipe. Um, it is my pulled, even though we're talking about fish here right now, while he microwaves, I just, I meant to do this earlier in, in, uh, in between segments, but I, I, I just don't want to leave it out with, with you being here, Michael. So we're going to switch back to the meat section while the fish finishes cooking. A quick recipe uh, sponsored by Gomek Lat. Emporium in Cedarhurst for all your amazing meat and fish needs. Um, I never know what to do with my leftover chicken from the chicken soup. It doesn't taste like, you know, if there's a lot left over and I sometimes I try to shred into the chicken soup, but sometimes there's a lot left over. So I take all the chicken out um, probably Sunday night uh, after what, you know, all the leftovers, you know, go into the fridge Friday night from the chicken soup and Sunday I take it out. And then I take all the meat off the uh, bones um, and then I saute an onion and all that shredded meat I throw in with the sauteed onions and then I add in a cup of barbecue sauce. A cup of barbecue sauce with the chicken and I don't cover it and the onions. Just keep mixing it, mixing it, what, watch for uh, burning. Um, but what it does is it gives that whole pulled chicken barbecue feel like you're having a really good pulled brisket sandwich but instead it's with chicken. And it has because you have this great barbecue sauce Barbecue sauces come in all different kinds of flavors as well. Like if you like a hickory or a more spicy uh, bland, I actually a brand. You have to just find what you like. Um, I actually bring my barbecue sauce in from Australia. People think I'm crazy, but I bring really? like ten bottles every time because I only like Australian barbecue sauce. I've had American barbecue sauce; it's good, but you know sometimes you like what you grow up on, um, like Vegemite. Ha <laughs> ha! Nobody likes that but me. Um, so so we have our Australian barbecue sauce. And I add that into my sauteing onions and chicken and I just let it reduce down a little bit so the flavors really intensify. Then I take some Kaiser roll or if I have some leftover fresh challah that I've wrapped tight in a bag so it's still nice and fresh because um, I make it fresh every Friday after I leave here. That's, you know, my challah is rising as we speak and then I go home and I braid it. Um, but what I do is I take some slices of fresh challah and then I put my um, delicious uh, pulled chicken, which I've had, and it's very quick to come together. And I put that inside my uh, challah sandwich or um, Kaiser roll, delicious. And then, of course, you can pick up some um, coleslaw from Chapanash or make your own. I actually have on my website, theaussiegourmet.com, a great uh, pulled barbecue sandwich, which is actually an ode to all my barbecue friends out there and Ari White because I once – I came up with this recipe after spending all day uh, chasing him down and eating uh, his pulled brisket sandwiches. And I'm like, I'm still in the mood. It didn't actually, you know, I, I wanted more. So I, I used my Shabbos leftovers that night and I made that. And I'm like, this is an ode to the barbecue people. So I really love, you know, try to get that barbecue feeling with your Sunday night leftovers. And it's kind of reinventing Shabbat meal. You know, the kids don't think they're eating leftovers because you've, you know, re made it into something else. So, um, yeah, so... Back to the show. Back to back to uh, our fish eating. Uh, now that we are, uh, we can't really talk too much um, about um, um, fish and barbecue without mentioning that during the nine days you can barbecue fish. It's Let's true. spend a minute talking um, about a couple of minutes. I spoke to uh, mm -hmm. different uh, karst organizations, especially the Vital Fire Towns, and the proper way to cook barbecue uh, fish is. Just clean your grates. That's it. Try to get whatever stuff on top of the... Uh, from the hood. From the hood. Just try to clean it off. Um, and otherwise, you're fine. Just put a piece of silver foil on it, and you could grill it on the same grill. It's really not a problem. You, you have to actually cover the grates? That's what's preferable, but if you don't want to do that, you can walk into Aussie's Fish, and we have cedar plank salmon. What does that mean? So, cedar plank is basically a trick of how to do what he does 
with fish. Now, basically, okay. when he's smoking meat, they're smoking wood, right? Okay. So what they make is a cedar plank. Basically, it's a plank of cedar wood about 12 inches long that you soak in water. Oh, you have to soak you it. Soak I guess it will catch water. on fire, right? Right. And you stick that on the grill with your salmon on it, and it comes with a special um, our, our, a special signature brown sugar rub, or we have one with a teriyaki scallion rub. And you rub it on top, and you just stick it on the grill, and you don't touch it for 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on the size of the fish, and it comes off. And it's the smokiest hickory cedar grilled plank of... Uh, it's just delicious, and it's soft, doesn't dry I, out. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, you sell the wood? No, we sell the whole thing with the salmon on it. And we sell the wood. You sell the wood, the salmon, and the spices. Yeah, it usually comes together, but if you want to ask the guys over there, they'll, they'll be glad to get you aboard. If you Can want you to make your own... Let, uh, them know, let Mario know. He's the, the uh, manager there in the Gome Gla uh, uh, Aussie's Fish Counter. I make him crazy. <laughs> I want my fish cut this way and this way. And you know what? He does it. He's amazing. The guys will customize any piece you want. But I I want one on my way home. Can you let him know I'm coming by to no get problem. one? Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I, I've seen it. I've never actually done it because it seems so complicated, it's, right? It's actually very simple. Yeah. I mean, and, and I've done it at home, and it is surprisingly easy. And the amount of flavor <clears throat> you can extract from that fish with the smoke is just you've got to taste it to, to believe it. It's oh my a, god, I'm so excited. It's a totally new flavor that you've ever had in fish that you probably never had before. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, now what about, um, so you, 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 you have to make sure your oven is clean though. You're not your oven, your you barbecue. Could, you could also bake it, by the way. You could use the, the cedar plank to the bake? cedar plank in the oven. It works. It does, and it gives it that? It does. It gives it that flavor. But obviously it's better, you know. On the grill. You, know, yeah, you don't make burgers in your oven, but it right, works. Everything's better on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, I'm going to definitely try that. But you have to have cleaned out your your barbecue first, right? Like a hot You should, you a hot should try clean. to clean out the oven, the, okay, the, you, the hood a little and bit. And you, you close the hood when you're doing Yeah, this. you keep it closed. You want, to, you want to let that smoke envelop the whole thing. Okay. I hope everyone is learning as much as I am today because I've always wanted to do this. I've just never done it. Okay. So, uh, we, but they sell like, I think at Costco, cedar planks also. They could be. I think you can, I think you can buy it. And you they're reusable. It Are Lowe's, they reusable? The hardware store. No, they're not reusable. So it's a one-time thing. Yeah. Ah, because they just rot or burn or... Well, you've cooked food on it, so you don't want to store it, you know, for later use. You've pretty much used it up. <laughs> so oh, you okay. Get rid of it. All right. No, and I'm sure they're not too costly. So no, 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 they're not. No, okay, not cool. Um, what about things on the barbecue besides cedar planks? I once had with your mother barbecue, and we did kebabs. Oh, we have kebabs in the store. We have salmon kebabs, sea bass kebabs, tuna kebabs. We have all different types of these things, and also our salmon burgers. Everybody loves our salmon burgers. We got three types of salmon burgers, regular, Asian, and our carb-free. We have seafood cakes. Uh, they call them mock crab cakes. We got two lines of those. Um, we have lemon pepper bronzinis. We have a full line of stuff in our fridge you could check out. But basically, any fish could be grilled. You just watch it and just don't let it overcook, and that's it. You're done. It'd be ready in about three, four minutes. So any fish, like, so, well, I, like the, I like the time factor there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but so he... I'm just worried that like a thin fish, say like this um, flounder, it's very thin. It won't disintegrate or you have to... So any, on it. any thin fish, I, I would put a, maybe a little piece of silver foil underneath just in case it breaks down. But uh, you can ask any of the guys which fish are preferable for grilling. We, uh, we have a new fish that we just started carrying about 10 months ago. What? Nile perch. Nile perch. That's very Nile Australian. Perch. It's nice and thick. Right. It actually is, is an Australian fish from starting at origin, but... Uh, it's mostly from the uh, Lake Victoria now. Um, it's wild caught. It's very healthy. More omega threes than salmon. People don't really? know that. Yeah. Oh, there you it's go. A very healthy because it's Australian. And it's it's a firm, nice, firm fish. It won't it won't break apart on you in the grill. And I love Nile perch. Yeah, it's great. And we've done shows together. The good thing about that. Nile perch is you could cook it forever, and it will never dry out ever. I like that. I like that. You know, what my I'm not telling you to cook it forever, no. but but Please it's don't. a very hard fish to. Uh, to, to, to not come out right, and uh, it's very economical comparative to other fish. I think it usually goes for about $10 a pound in the store comparative to mahi-mahi or, mahi or fresh red snapper or fresh tuna, which is you know sometimes double the price of that. Right. It's a very economical fish. Oh, nice. You know what my favorite fish is? It's the worst. You're taking something so healthy and you're dipping it in a beer batter and then into hot oil, beer-battered fish with cod or a nice thick flounder or a Nile perch. There is nothing better than, oh, it's delicious, with um, 
you make like eggs and beer. I actually have res Susie Fishbein uh, took my beer battered uh, flounder recipe and it's in uh, her Kosher by Design Entertains. I was so honoured when she asked me for it. And I have it with Aussie's tartar sauce. How do you say it in America? Tartar sauce. Tartar. In Australia we say tartar. Tartar sauce. Very Aussie sounding there. Um, and, and it's delicious. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fish and chips is a very easy thing to make. I'm, I'm saying you could obviously do it, you know, and cheat and make like a schnitzel type of thing. Right. So, but, right. But very easy. It's it's very simple. It's a two to one ratio. Yeah. Let's you have do it. two, um, what do you call it? I'm sorry. One. Ooh. Wow. One. What? No, it's good. Keep talking. It shows almost over. We've been oh, talking away. You do one to two, basically, of flour to either seltzer or beer. And okay. uh, basically, one one cup to one to two cups, or or whatever your measurement is. Add a little salt, a little baking soda in there, and you mix it up into a batter. You dip your fish in, and you just throw it in in the fryer, and you'll have a classic British fish and chips. Fish recipe. and chips, or Australian, know, Australian, very, whatever you want to call them, it. But uh, a splash of vinegar on it. We put vinegar on our people chips. People put as vinegar, well. lemon juice, pickles. I mean. Every, I feel like every single county or city in that country has their own method of how to make it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When yeah. I was in Australia a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, uh, I saw, uh, I was in Bondi Beach and I saw all the fish shops and they, all the fish shops there do, like you buy your, you know, your, your, your salmon. They're not, it's not a kosher fish shop, but, um, you know, they sell salmon and lobster and prawn, but they do on the side fish and chips. Yeah. And you take it, thing. you go eat it at the beach. It's a big thing. Very, very, very Australian thing to do, but, um. There used to be a kosher fish and chip shop, but it's it's no longer there. Yeah. Um, Let's check out the fish before. Uh, ZK is reminding me that oh. we have a fish in the microwave because um, we've got about like three and a half minutes left of the show. And we definitely have to try this because this has been – we love eating our way through the shows, don't we, ZK? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay, so this has really been all about the food of this week. We've done uh, – barbecues make sure you check out the long island barbecue website to get all the details for you to come to the long island barbecue competition and participate uh let's give the website again is it's uh, li kosher barbecue.org um and that is in two weeks from uh, 10 to 3 or a week from sunday a week 22nd. from sunday okay so we have aussies uh michael Moshi Schoenfeld. Michael's his English name. Yeah, it's my email. <laughs> <laughs> Moshi Schoenfeld from Aussie's Fish. Okay, let's bog into this. <laughs> that was also very strange to say bog in. Uh, this is tilapia. Yeah. With um, a, a uh, he's made, uh, it's also from the foil packets with Aussie's amazing pesto sauce. I'm obsessed with this. I'm actually low, Moshi. Have they got more in the store? Yeah, we got. Okay, great. Uh, go gorgeous lemon for garnish. And then we've got some onions and some green beans. Uh, what are these called? Snap, snap peas. peas, snap peas. I'm sorry. I don't even know my beans so well. Um, and we're going to have a little uh, eating fest. But this looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take a little bit off. Make sure you check out Aussie's Facebook page and their website and sign up there. I'm going to pass that to you, CK. We've had a great show. I'm licking my fingers. <laughs> Hope I've uh, taught um, people things and our listeners and they have uh, will share back with things with me that they have learned um let me know what you learn about the show and what if you've done a cedar plank before let me know any tips because i love to learn from my listeners and from people when i give a lot of cooking classes i love when people give me back tips so i can put that into practice too so everyone now uh, thank you so much for listening um our show is sponsored by abel's and hyman we taste better best hot dogs around for our barbecues i must say those those 16 packs of the abel's and hyman's they're much better than the apex oh uh, really those 16 packs are the best right ZK? They're that, much thicker. That, that tube that they put in it. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it is. Really good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, I don't. Um, I, I have to go check that out. Um, okay, so we've got a live show in Gourmet Gart coming up in two weeks. Next week's show is Leia Shapira uh, from with her new cookbook. New cookbook. Uh, we're very excited. Her dairy cookbook, and we're also going to be having Javi Katzman. We're going to be having a pasta party right here in the studio. So we're all at the as in case very excited. Uh, so uh, make sure you tune in next Friday. So I just want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom, a great, uh, hopefully gorgeous weekend. We're not, not exactly. I didn't check the weather this morning because I'm a little obsessed with the weather always. Um, so uh, tune in next week um, for uh, another great show, and we have. Music sponsored by our friends at Kedem, right up to Lichbenching. Thank you, Michael Glickman and Moshe Schoenfeld for this wonderful day today and a wonderful yeah, show. It was great. Thank you. All right. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Take care. Music by Nachum Siegel Network. Okay, now we're going to eat.